Hello, Jenny Hall here for Ink on 3. I'm so excited today to share you this watercolor stencil resist technique. I'm using a really pretty stencil called the Pondy Stencil from Ink on 3 and the Fox and Bunny stamp set. So let's get started on the background technique. This is a piece of watercolor paper cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. We will cut it down later. And I'm taking some of the Atelier ink pads that are really concentrated ink and swiping them directly onto that watercolor paper. You could use ink refills to just drip it on if you like, but I like to do this technique with my stamp pad because I can get some really unique looks. Now using the blunt end of a paintbrush or any kind of a tool you like to hold your paper down, allow it to mix around with some water and spray it as much as you like. That's the fun part about this technique. We are going to create a background that is full of intense color. You can keep it as dark as you like or bring it down and lighten it up a bit. But for this technique, the darker, the better. Now I'm going to place this piece of watercolor paper on my Misty and I'm going to use my Misty pieces to hold it all together. I don't do this as often as I should. Sometimes I use just a piece of tape on my workspace, but the Misty works great for all sorts of different uses. I'm using some juicy embossing ink from Ink on 3 and I'm going right through that stencil and you may have guessed where we're going with this technique, but what I'm doing is applying the ink directly down to the watercolor paper through the stencil, and then we're going to add some clear embossing powder from Ink on 3 on top of that juicy embossing ink. So what's going to happen is once we heat up this embossing powder and set it, then there's going to be a plastic coating that will trap all of that really beautiful bright color right onto the watercolor paper. So once this embossing has cooled down and dried, that's very important, give it a few minutes to kind of settle in, then we're going to use more water and a damp cloth or a paper towel and we're going to pick up the color that's on the watercolor paper that is not trapped underneath the embossing. There's lots of different names for this technique. Some people I think call it Joseph's Coat. Uh, there's lots of lots of different ways to do this. But I really like doing this with a stencil because I can get a really cool look. Now I'm going to use two rectangle dies, one larger than the other, and I'm going to make a white mat for the watercolor panel to sit on. This is going to serve two purposes. First, it's going to let the eye rest before it transitions over to the black card base. And the second reason is because when I make a technique on a watercolor panel, I like to give that watercolor paper somewhere to stick to that's not going to let it buckle. And when I adhere this down to the card base, it's going to be nice and flat. It just kind of makes things a little more happier in my world. So I'm using some liquid glue to adhere this panel down to a side folding A2 card base. And I wasn't really sure at this point how I was going to attach our images and the sentiment, but I had like an aha moment. You know, we all get those in the middle of crafting. And I decided to change the way I was going to do the card. So I found this scrap of black paper in my stash and it was just the perfect size. And I scored it about a half an inch away from the right hand edge. And then I scored it again about an eighth of an inch away from that. And I gave it two scores because it's going to allow this to fold over the card front a little easier if I give it an extra score. So I'm adhering that down with some more double-sided tape. This is a really strong sticky stuff. And by giving it that little lift, that little score lift spot, 
I can now have this little flap that is going to hug the front of the paper. So the reason I thought about that was I kept looking at my sentiment and the stamp and I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I could make it feel like someone was getting a hug because the sentiment is going to be sending hugs. So that was the idea behind making the sentiment work this way. I've got another piece of watercolor paper here. I've stamped the image with some blackout ink from Ink on 3 and sprinkled on some clear embossing powder. Now here's something I don't usually show. This is the Ink Off Stamp Cleaner that I use on almost every one of my images. It works so well. Once that is heat set, the embossing powder, then I am going to do some really easy watercoloring. And I almost always keep some Atelier ink refills dripped into my porcelain palette. This is something that is really handy for me because the ink refills from Ink on 3 work as the same as liquid watercolor. Some people call it liquid watercolor. And I tell you what, it's just really easy to work with. So that's why I'm not showing me dripping in the ink refills because they're already there. They're always in my palette nowadays. So I'm just using a couple of colors on each one of the images. The fox has a yellow base and then I added orange and then red around the edges. And the little bunny has a purple base. Well, first I added white and then purple and then blue into the shadow areas. And I added little pink cheeks for both of them. Super, super simple. I do not have coordinating dies for this stamp set, but that's okay. I have no problem fussing cutting. And so I fussy cut the images and then I decided to take another detour <laughs> and I made my decision that I was going to have the sentiment be on that little hug flap. I wanted to do it on a different part of the card and just put little sentiment strips, but I couldn't get away from the idea that I really needed it to be on this black flap. I didn't make that decision before I attached it to the card base, but it, it worked out okay. By using the heat tool under and over the paper on both sides, I kept it from warping, so it worked out. Last minute craft changes, it just, you know, sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. And this one did work out. I'm really thankful for that. Here is some double-sided foam tape that I used to attach these sweet little images. And now I'm going to use some um, little rhinestones from Trinity Stamps with a jewel picker and some liquid glue and just put some sparkle. Now there's a lot of sparkle on this card already from that clear embossing powder, but I want it there to be just somewhere that would catch the eye and move it around. And then we've got that white border that lets the eye rest. And then we've got our sentiment on the black strip that also allows the eye to rest. Because I have a exposed flap on the inside of the card where I adhered that little hug, hug portion wrap around, then I'm going ahead and adding in a white panel to cover that up. And then I couldn't resist using that little image that it's just, there's two sizes and it's just perfect. Thanks for joining us at the Ink on 3 YouTube channel. And we encourage you to come back and visit more by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell to be notified for another video. Thanks for watching today.